Hello and welcome to Beach View, our podcast about different things. That's right, and today we are going to be talking about food things, and we have a special guest with us today, our dad, Blaze. Hi, Blaze. Hello. Happy to be here to talk about my favorite subject is food. You know, it's one of my favorite subjects, too. I think Bryce can take it or leave it, but <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Since we we are a very much a family that loves food. Well, I can't really say that. Only some of us really love food. <laughs> but most, most calling of us me do. out. Yeah, yeah, we're calling you out. <laughs> Brenna is kind of you know take or leave it, but um, we all love food, so um, we're gonna talk about mm -hmm. that. I thought we would have some interesting topics to cover with you today. So thank you for joining us. I'm glad that you're here. So I guess we'll start with, um, let's go way back, okay? So I know that you started cooking when you were like a young child, right? Yes, probably about nine or ten maybe. Ooh. And yeah, tell us a little bit about that. Like, how did you get into it? Well, um, I'd watch my mom cook and I thought, well, maybe I can make this a little bit better. So I would add <laughs> stuff to it. Like... Um, <laughs> Just the seasonings, all kind of seasonings, stuff like that. Because we did back then. I don't even think we even had onion powder or garlic powder in the house. So yeah, just find other stuff. Did you do a good job, or at first was it like you didn't really know what you were doing? Right, <laughs> I didn't know what I was doing at <laughs> first. It wasn't until I became an adult and I was on my own till I started really refining stuff and making it better and stuff like that. Yeah. So I would I would taste the food from. You know, obviously school cafeterias, which wasn't any good. I said, I know I can make it better <laughs> than that. So that's that's how it all kind of got started, too. Okay. Well, I remember um, Mama Kitty, which is your mom, I remember her saying that, that she would um, get you to cook with her to keep you out of trouble. Is that true? <laughs> Probably. <laughs> well, I'm sure. It, uh, well, because she was a stay-at-home mom at first. But, uh, yeah, maybe it started way back before I started school because I was always getting in trouble. I was always mischievous and exploring different things, as we could call it. But, yeah, I think that's what happened. She would make me watch her cook. So that's probably how I got how how I learned how to cook. Well, that is how I learned how to cook from her. So, yeah, uh, I remember when I was like even in um, high school, it took like some culinary arts classes and. And I would try to, um, you know, make things better too, but I didn't really know what I was doing. So sometimes like my dish would end up being like super spicy, <laughs> like yeah. not in a good way. So it was all about like, you know, learning what's good and, and what's like a little too much. And uh, there's a lot of trial and error, I think, to that. But so I kind of, uh, I guess I kind of started cooking with you when I was younger too, mm -hmm. right? Right. And yeah, so we kind of, uh, you know, that's like a multi-generational thing. I don't know where Bryce was in all of this. I think he missed the boat on that. Sorry, Bryce. <laughs> yeah. well, he cooks his own stuff now. He does, yeah. Well, yeah. I, I <laughs> learned do. to cook from you stuff, like uh, mostly <laughs> fish, because it was like, you know, growing up, um, if I was going to have something, like, I would just, you know, let him cook it <laughs> Yeah. and not worry about it. But, like, fish, you know, that's something I make for myself. So he'd teach me to, like, you know, yeah, here's how to cook a tuna or whatever. Right. <laughs> well, I remember cooking uh, seafood uh, with you too, Dad, but I never liked seafood. But I used to, you know, cook it with you, uh, like black and red fish and mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. And then I'm sure, Bryce, you've heard this before, but they used to try to trick me and tell me that it was chicken. But I knew it was fish, so, you know. They were always trying to pull one over on me, so I, I still remember that. I didn't forget about it. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so, this, is, this um, is chicken. It's really good. Taste it. <laughs> well, I so have a like, this question. This chicken tastes funny. Which one of your favorite dishes to cook? Me? Yeah. Oh, really anything. Probably Cajun food, jambalaya, gumbo. Um, I don't make etouffee very much, but... Just anything Cajun, because I like to put a lot of spices in it. Not spices to make it hot, but spices to flavor it. Yeah. And that's why people think, well, Cajun food is so hot, but not really. Yeah. It's flavorful. It is. So whenever I make it for people around here, 
which, you know, they can't tolerate much heat. So I make it just, I don't make it spicy at all. We just add spices to it. Yeah. That's one of my favorite things to cook too. And, you know, you always have to differentiate, you know, Cajun versus Creole because some people, you know, like to put tomatoes in their gumbo and that's just not right. So <laughs> we got to stick to, <laughs> we got to stick to the Cajun. But um, actually on that note, I was very proud because I had an event last night that um, I attended at work and I came home and Travis, my husband had made gumbo all by himself. And it's like his second time, like making it all by himself. Cause I had taught him how to do it. And I had learned from you dad. And so um, anyway, I was very proud of him. Now, last time he made it by himself, he did use a plastic spoon for the roux, which mm -hmm. as you know, you cannot do that. <laughs> So uh, as I was eating the gumbo, there was a big chunk of plastic spoon in my bowl. <laughs> and I was like, what is this? <laughs> so um, I'm, still, I'm still teaching, but, you know, I don't have kids, so I have to teach, you know, my husband. Right, <laughs> right. You can teach your cats. Yeah, I mean, I have taught the cats how to hunt and gather, so there you go. <laughs> <laughs> they bring but... home the wrong food. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. So you talked about, you know, cooking Cajun stuff. Would you say like that growing up down here in Louisiana, that that really influenced your cooking? Or do you have any other like big influences on what you like to cook? Oh, yeah, for sure. E eating in restaurants. And I mean, that's all we would go to mostly is Cajun type, New Orleans type food. So that's what I grew up cooking. I mean, I grew up eating it. So that's why I cook it now. So, you know, when people ask me, what do I miss most about living up here? Well, it's the food, but then I say, it's the food down in South Louisiana, but then I say, but I can cook that food, so I don't miss it that much. Just right. the hot sausage po' boys is what I miss the most, but because we don't get that up yeah. here. <laughs> yeah, you don't get that. I'll have to send one home with Brenna when she comes down. <laughs> uh, we won't, you know, she'll, she'll eat it because yeah. <laughs> she eats all of them. <laughs> I know. <laughs> We have a uh, we have to fight over hot sausage po' boys in our family. So yes. So speaking of okay, eating out at restaurants, what would you say is your favorite New Orleans restaurant of all time, oh, or most memorable? That's difficult. It depends on what I want to eat. I know. Um, seafood stuff, obviously in Belle Chase, Louisiana, Salvos. They have the best gumbo. The the best. Crab legs, the best ever, or crab claws, just everything. And then if, if I want something spicier and more and heavier, I, um, Copeland's is, is a, my go-to restaurant because, uh, I mean, it's, it's really flavorful. And, you know, most people know Copeland's down there. Yeah. So, and, and then that, that's where I imitate a lot of their dishes, like um, mm -hmm. shrimp Copeland. Uh, I can make that taste yeah. just like it. I mean, just, just stuff like that. Yeah. A lot of other, just the hole in a wall restaurants, you know, you get good po' boys, mm -hmm. you get good gumbo, really just pick a hole in a wall restaurant down there and you, and it's good. Yeah. We recently um, discovered, and, and you guys picked up food from there last time y'all came down too, is um, the Time Saver. It's a gas station. That's right. And people think that's funny that you, you eat food from a gas station, but it's really good. <laughs> so. Yes. But they do red beans, jambalaya, all that, you know, po' boys, all that kind of stuff. Um, it's really tasty. Yeah, I would gain a whole lot more weight if I lived down there again. <laughs> it's it's really hard. Um, and I think people from other places don't really understand that. Because there are some times where, you know, if I eat a lot of heavy stuff, I don't feel so good, you know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I'm like, I want something healthy and fresh. You know, like maybe a vegetarian option or something that, I, you know, if I want to go out to eat, there's really nothing around that you, you know, there's no, I mean, in New Orleans there is or, or in a bigger city, but right around me on the North Shore, there's not a lot of choices as far as cuisine, you know, so you can't really, you know, it's hard to get like really healthy, fresh stuff at, you know, your neighborhood restaurants here, it doesn't happen. So right. that is hard. You definitely would gain weight, like living down here. It's a, always a struggle. Well, I always used to always say, um, you won't find any skinny Louisiana people. So Yeah, <laughs> I know. I'm like, 
I'm struggling, man. Come on. Because <laughs> I mean, it doesn't matter. You know, you okay? I'm 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 gonna have a New Year's resolution. I'm giving up sweets, and then all of a sudden, king cakes are there. So you have to eat yes. king cakes, and then they have all you these have festivals. To. You know, Saint Joseph's altar and uh, Saint Patrick's mm-hmm. Day, and all these other huge festivals that they that they have down there. So you can't ever try to go on a diet. I mean, no. you can cut back. But... It's very difficult. Yeah, as soon as you get through the holidays, you have you know Mardi Gras, um, and and I love um, All Kings Day. Mm-hmm. Or um, Twelfth Night, as it's called. That's the beginning of king cake season. Well, it's the beginning of carnival season, but that's when I like to get my first king cake, like traditionally. And that's, um, was it January 6th? So as soon as you get through the holidays, you get into king cake season, you get into Mardi Gras. I mean, you it's true. Like, you can't not eat here. Bryce, I feel like if you, like, grew up down here that you would be the same way. So, no. you know, you have a lot of food options. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> They're getting know. better. They're getting better on, uh, we have a lot more, um, like, tofu, like, um, different alternative protein sources here. So, yes, I think you would enjoy it. <laughs> you got to find the right, like, place, but. Yeah, I'm still not a huge fan of food. <laughs> I know. Yes, we know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I know that's that's our uh, one major. Uh, I won't I won't say it's a fail, but <laughs> <laughs> I wish we shared well, that love. You know, <laughs> he used to eat normal. I don't know what happened to him. <laughs> <laughs> His taste got refined. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> when people say I'm picky, I like to say no. I have a refined palate. You just don't understand. Yes, yeah. <laughs> you can't be on my level. You know. Right. <laughs> well, speaking of restaurants down there, we we recently. Well, I guess it's been. Not quite a year. We got a, a Popeye's up here. Oh. Yeah, I've been there several <laughs> times. <laughs> That's awesome. Look, I love Popeye's, okay? And it's really funny because you know how they came out with their um, chicken sandwich? Mm-hmm. Like, was that last year, maybe? The year before? Yeah. I don't remember. Something like that. Well, there was this big chicken sandwich debate. I don't know. Was that nationwide or was it just No, here? it was nationwide. <laughs> okay. It was this big chicken sandwich debate, and uh, I read something, um, of course, it's somebody from New Orleans that wrote it online, and it said, you know, it was like Chick-fil-A versus Popeye's, okay, chicken sandwiches, and it was like, you know, the Chick-fil-A sandwich um, tastes like a white woman named Sarah, um, you know, put it together, you know, cooked it in her kitchen for you, it's very nice and, and tasty, but the Popeye's chicken sandwich was definitely made by a black woman in her Cajun kitchen. I don't know. It was something, it was really funny. It was just like, you know, it wasn't like a racial thing, but it right. was just like hilarious, like stereotypical, like, you know, this white lady from the Northeast, mm-hmm. you know, versus like some a Cajun. Home woman, Cajun. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it was really cute, but it, it's definitely accurate too. So Popeye's is definitely one of those uh, tasty treats that you get. You want to get every once in a while. Yes, and we we recently got a um, a lost Cajun franchise restaurant. Oh we've, we've yeah, been there twice. Um, I think Slidell has one now, don't they? We do. I haven't even been there yet. It's been there for a couple of years now. Um, but I never think about it. Is it good? Yes, it, it's it's authentic. Cause it, like authentic. Yeah, the person who um, started it is from Lafayette, Louisiana. Mm. So he um, he franchised it out. It's catching on like crazy, and they have well, the only problem they have hot sausage po' boys, but it's links instead of patties. So I never get that. You, and um, yes, I went, the, the jambalaya yes, is good. The red beans patties. and rice are good. They have some yeah. some pasta, Cajun pasta stuff that you know that, that I know you would eat. So it's not pasta it's not all lion. seafood. Yeah. So okay, yeah. I definitely have to try it. I know they have beignets, too. I, I don't know if they're, like, good beignets, but I got to try those, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, <laughs> I, um, <laughs> Bryce is like, yeah, okay. Yeah, <laughs> Sorry, Bryce. We're, we're geeking eh, out over food here. It's not my thing. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, well, I already asked, like, what your favorite food to cook is, but what's your favorite cook food to eat? Cook food that to you eat. you couldn't Ooh. cook. The caveat that you couldn't cook. That I didn't know. I guess. Oh, way back when. Well, I don't I don't make a good seafood gumbo, so 
I, I mean, what? anytime I wanted seafood gumbo, we'd go to a restaurant and get it. So I never learned how to cook that very, I never, I don't think I cooked it once, but um, yeah. probably chicken and sausage gumbo, red beans and rice. That'd be my Ooh. two, my top two. Well, I said that you, so that'd that be your I top didn't two, cook? just general. Yeah, well, just so your top two in general would be those two, but what about ones that you oh that can't I can't or won't that cook? I haven't cooked? Yeah, gumbo, seafood gumbo. Okay, I, I I can't do that justice, so I'll eat that out. That's probably it. And then of course we can't get the fixins for the hot sauces po boys here. Yeah, and and homemade just not it's just not as good. You got to have those it's those not. patents patties. Mm-hmm. Uh, anyway, to make no that. Yeah. sort of sweets or anything like uh, pastries. No, because I usually cook a lot of that. <laughs> I mean, bread pudding, obviously, but, but we can cook that easily. But that's about it. I don't, we don't make beignets here because it's too messy, you know. <laughs> Homemade well, beignets yeah, are too you messy. You never make beignets. They're never as good as no, Cafe Du Monde. Because you, you got to get the oil anyway. really hot, and it's got to have a yes. lot in it. Yes. Okay, so. I remember watching a lot of cooking shows with you and when I was younger and that kind of, I used to, you know, watch great chefs, great cities on the discovery channel, like during the summers, mm -hmm. you know, get in the kitchen and like cook all kinds of stuff and make a huge mess. Mm -hmm. Um, and that was so fun. But what, what was your favorite cooking show or is your favorite now? Oh, now would be uh, Diners, Drive-Ins, and Dives with uh, Guy Fieri. Yeah. <laughs> but everybody else cooks. But we were just watching. In fact, the other night, uh, Amro Lagasse was on. Yeah. So I said, he's the one who really started the fad or the, you know, the whole thing, even though there were some other shows, Julia Child and Justin Wilson, yeah. and Martin Yen, um, <laughs> Yen Can Cook. Yeah, Yen Can they, Cook. They were there, but... I think Emeril Lagasse popularized it and, and I mean, it just exploded from mm -hmm. there. But um, yeah, we have Hulu and there's probably 50 cooking shows on that, on, on Hulu. Well, I gotta check that out. Yeah, you should. And uh, it's all, well, you gotta pay for Hulu, but there's so many shows, Yeah. Uh, probably more than 50. And I'll, I'll click on some of them, but anyway, I, I think, I think Emeril Lagasse was my favorite. And when you go back and look at it, it's like, yeah, yeah I remember when he did that because <laughs> we saw every show. Yeah, I definitely, Emeril was like a big influence on me mm -hmm. too. In fact, when I was in high school, um, I, like I said, taken a culinary arts classes and I really wanted to be a culinary artist. And I think um, you were the one who was like, okay, but you don't, cook seafood and if you <laughs> if you want to be a chef in new orleans like you've got to handle seafood right. and um and plus at that time it wasn't very common to have like a female executive chef you know like you had to really work your way up right. and you know long hours it was really you know sounded like a tough uh journey there so i was like yeah maybe i had to go into something else so i did yeah. <laughs> and i'm glad i went into something else but i still uh very much enjoy cooking, but definitely Emeril was one of those um, who was a big influence because he he was really and like you said there were others before him, but he really popularized Cajun cooking. I mm -hmm. would say. I mean, I don't know if that's an accurate you know statement, but he for me and my generation, he um, definitely was the first one that you saw on TV, and he had these restaurants in New Orleans, and I just like I was like I want to do that one day, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That was fun, but I think um, what I like about Cajun cooking is that it's it's pretty easy to do. It's very like simple to me, and I know a lot of people you know don't have a handle on it, but I think because they just didn't grow up with it, you know. But I like the simplicity of it, and I mean you can throw together you know anything, add those you know seasonings, and make it really flavorful. And I think it's it's delicious, like. I think recently I made, um, what is it? Not sauce pecan, but, um, Creole. Uh, no, it was, oh, I, it's escaping me, but it, it's just like a simple chicken dish. Mm -hmm. That's like a Cajun dish. Um, you know it. I just can't think of what it is. <laughs> oh, fricassee. Oh, okay. Chicken fricassee. 
Yeah, and uh, and it's just so simple and it's so delicious. I think that's why I really like it. But anyway, so definitely Emerald was was my guy. Do you still get in the kitchen and try to to recreate dishes or or do you have like your old favorites that you just go back to every time? No, we try to recreate them. Um we did the um from PF Chang's the, there's a lettuce wrap that mm-hmm. we recreated. Yes. And it tasted really well. I mean, it doesn't we don't have those Chinese spices and sauces, you know, oyster mm-hmm. sauce or fish sauce and all that. We don't have that, but we could um, we, it's almost it's pretty close to it. Yeah. So and I tried to make uh, she crab soup, but it doesn't come out too well because they, they have that a lot around no. here. No. Yeah, I know. Anytime I've gone to South Carolina, I've seen she crab soup everywhere. And of course, I don't, yeah, I don't, don't eat it, it, but <laughs> it's good. Yeah. Bryce, do you have any? No. It, uh, <laughs> y'all can. <laughs> do you have any favorite Cajun dishes or any dishes that dad cooks that you like? Um. Uh, red beans and rice, which I can still eat. <laughs> can uh, still I don't eat. think I've ever mentioned it on the podcast, but I'm a vegetarian. I think we've been kind of talking around that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I have to make uh, non-meat red beans and rice, which is hard to do, and just put the sausage in yeah. after we take his part out. So we put the sausage in. Oh, uh, there you go. That's not too bad. Yeah. Yeah, no, so, I mean, <laughs> it, it, it's good. Still tasty. But yeah, a lot of a lot of Cajun dishes are are very meat heavy. So, well, what about the seafood ones? Do you do you like those? The seafood. I don't eat seafood either, though. <laughs> that's, oh, that's, that's right. Meat. I didn't. No, forgot. we don't eat anything that's been alive yeah. except for plants. So, I got you. Like fungi yeah. aren't plants, and I eat those. <laughs> I mean, it's like plant adjacent, though, right? <laughs> I mean, it's like a growing plant, right? No? <laughs> fun guy? I don't know. Yeah, you're such a fun well, guy. I'm, I'm a fun guy. <laughs> There's a bar joke that goes along with fun guy, but since we were broadcasting live, I'm not going to say anything. <laughs> <laughs> we're not broadcasting live. We're, we're broadcasting recording. live. Oh, we're not, we're not on the airwaves right now? No. no. I record this and then edit it together. <laughs> I know that. <laughs> He's just uh, messing with you. Yeah, guys. okay. <laughs> okay, so here's a question. Since we are, I wouldn't say we're all food snobs, but we all have our, you know, particular tastes, right? Right. When you go to other people's houses, okay, or events or whatever, and you're eating their food, is it a disappointment? Yes. <laughs> Because they they can't cook as well as I can. I know. Even yeah, sometimes when you when you eat like a steak at a restaurant, you're like, uh uh-uh, uh, I could do this better at home. We go to this restaurant down in Charleston, actually North Charleston, and, and um, the guy there, the owner, he's he he he's always there. He was complaining to one of the other workers, probably the bartender, and saying, "Man, this this guy from Louisiana, he was in there and he was eating, and he said." The owner said, you want to try the jambalaya? It's pretty good. He says, no. <laughs> he says, nobody from outside of Louisiana <laughs> yeah. can cook jambalaya as well as we no. can. So he was mad about, the, the owner was mad about uh-uh. about him. And, and so after we finished eating, because we had talked to him before, because he, he spent his time, he spent a lot of time in New Orleans in the Navy or whatever. He was, he was stationed down there. Mm-hmm. So I said, one thing you got to re- realize about Louisiana people is they're used to their jambalaya and their, their food one way. And if you mess that up or if it's different, they're not going to like it. Yeah. So he says, well, he didn't even want to try it. <laughs> so I, I tried it one time. One time <laughs> no. I went there, I got a side dish and it was decent, but it wasn't our jambalaya no. the way we fix it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Rule of thumb is anytime I travel and there's Cajun food, I ain't eating it. Okay. I'm sorry. It's not good. No. <laughs> like period. But okay? most people don't Unless know what that from... tastes like though, yeah. but they, they just they get it from, from, know. you know, obviously the lost Cajun is real Cajun food. So, it, and it's always crowded when we yeah. go there. So they must be doing something right or they are doing something right. So those people would like it. Yeah. But we've tried several Cajun restaurants. They would open up authentic new orleans food and it was not good no you know i mean it was tasty for these people uh, 
here. But yeah. Not, not and the it, look, it has its place in the world, you know? <laughs> like that kind of food has its place. But if you are a native, there's been one too many times that I've tried New Orleans style mm-hmm. food in a different place, even in a different country one time I saw it. And I was like, no, this is not. This isn't New Orleans style. I'm sorry. But they, they try real hard. And <laughs> you got to give them props for that. But uh, absolutely right. It's just not the same. And especially like you're saying, you know, a lot of people down here grew up making their Cajun or Creole dishes, you know, with their family. And they have it perfected um, in their own, you know, for their own taste. And so when you taste somebody else, even like, you know, you go to an event and there's like, jambalaya that was made like you know for for a big crowd yeah. sometimes it's not too good you know it, it's hard to to get the portions right, right but yeah when you find a good one is when you keep going back <laughs> but yeah, yeah i think that's what the problem is if you're making it for a, a large batches instead of for your family so you, you can't get those yes. spices in there but yeah it's, it's it is hard to do um a huge you know portion size you know, when you're used to making it just for your family. So it's it's different. Everything, the ratios are off and all that kind of stuff. I have been trying to do some cooking, you know, those tastes that I really love, but like making them healthier. And that's really hard to do because <laughs> it doesn't, it doesn't taste the same. But do you ever try to like lighten it, you know, make it a little bit like <laughs> less heavy <laughs> so it's a little healthier? No. <laughs> No, that's hard to you do. You can't. You really can't. That's because you're used to, well, I mean, I, I quit putting baking grease in my red beans and rice since rice has been eating them. Yeah. So that's healthier yeah. there. I use butter instead of, you know, baking grease. So when you're making a roux, I use, you know, I use, a, well, butter is a still a fat, but you just use less, yeah. you know, less of stuff. But anyway, but yeah, that that's. Yeah. I think that's about the only thing I do <laughs> change. Yeah, I know. I I had um, I used to make a lot of you know fettuccine alfredo and you know Cajun pasta and I love pasta too. So pasta laya, like that kind of stuff. And um, I was like, man, I buy a lot of heavy whipping cream. I need to take a step back. <laughs> like I need to like chill with all the fattening stuff. Like. You know, uh, when you reach a certain age and you start looking at your cholesterol mm-hmm. numbers, you're like, you're like, okay, maybe I need to take a step back. So um, I don't cook those, you know, Cajun dishes as much as I used to, just just uh, to try to be a little bit healthier. But like last night, it, it got cold. And when I say it got cold here, it was like 60 something <laughs> degrees. So we were all freezing. Yeah. I was freezing being outside last night, and I came home to some warm gumbo, and there's nothing better in the world, I think, than that. Right. When it's cold, yeah. Yeah, we just made chicken and sausage gumbo the other day, last week? Yeah, last week. Yeah. And it was good. We always say it's it's the best I've ever made, but um, That's there's a secret. That's what <laughs> Yeah. There's a secret that I've been putting in a lot of stuff. It's the filet. Yes. I put I put a cap of filet in it and it just it enhances the flavor of it. Uh yes. I do the same. I okay. add it at the end. And I think that's why my gumbo always tastes different than um well, Travis's gumbo that he's made. But definitely the filet it adds that earthy richness to right. it, you know? Right. I think that's delicious. I l- I even love the smell of filet, just smelling the the jar of filet. Right. And that and the <laughs> so bay good. leaves too. I I put excess yes. bay leaves in them too so it just brings out the flavor I must have well got that i think you. i'm gonna call it a day <laughs> let, let y'all finish all with right you. all right anyway um i don't know how to end this <laughs> thanks for joining yeah. us we appreciate it <laughs> this is blaze over and out goodbye all right bye <laughs> bye bye okay so now we're going to get into some forbidden foods. Forbidden tastes. It's uh, forbidden tastes. Okay, <laughs> these things are not food. Oh, you're right. You're right. You're right. So, okay. I was uh, brainstorming some topic ideas, you know, and I thought, hmm, this would make a potentially weird but interesting thought experiment, which is uh, <laughs> forbidden tastes. So. 
stuff that you can technically eat, but really should not because it's bad for you. <laughs> All right, let's get into this. Okay, All what, right. what so, were you thinking? Like, what's your first, uh, your well, first forbidden taste? So first, some parameters here. So not stuff like, I guess, like a strong enough acid or lava, which would, like, burn your tongue. Like, Ouch. you could technically put that in your mouth. I mean, I guess lava <laughs> might be difficult, but... <laughs> <laughs> like, or something like cyanide that's going to kill you instantly. Stuff that's, like, you know, you can eat it and it's slow-acting enough okay. that you'll be able to taste it before anything happens. Ew. Okay. So, give me an example. So... Poisonous mushrooms are an example. Some of them are, you know, technically edible. Uh, <laughs> one of them, for example, called the Destroying Angel. Ooh. Which, very interesting wow. name there. Oh. Where can this be found? So, uh, they're interesting because they, to amateur, like, mushroom hunters, they look similar to portobello mushrooms you know the very common mm -hmm. mushrooms so people could pick those up not knowing and thinking oh they're the good kind of edible mushroom eat them yeah. and what's uh bad about them is that they're very deadly but they have a delay so it takes several hours before you start feeling the uh the effects of it oh no you know wait i read about this one time that was it something for um COVID maybe or it was something that was like more recent and that there was like this kind of cure or something that was like going around online and somebody it had something to do with like mushroom juice and um somebody had I don't know if it's accidental or if they thought they were doing the right thing I don't know but they used this poison I don't know if that's the same one but a poisonous mushroom. And they ended up dying, and they were trying to, like, cure whatever they had. And it was like, what? Like, you gotta be careful with mushrooms, buddy. Like, you don't just go right, out and pick yeah. them and think that you know what yeah. you're doing, you know? <laughs> wow. But, like, I find that interesting, too, because, like, they must taste pretty normal, right? I would think so. If If people can eat them and then, like, not know anything's wrong until, like, hours later when the effects start to kick in. Yeah. Ew. So that's why I, I was thinking about those and I'm like, yeah, that's a forbidden taste. You can technically eat it, but you really, really shouldn't. Yeah, that's creepy. So you got any of these? Well, mine's not quite as dramatic, but I was thinking like um, what immediately came to mind was drinking like fresh water sources, like mountain streams or like fresh water, like lakes and stuff, if you drink the water, you could get, a, I think it's a parasite like called Giardia, or, and there's, you know, several different ones, but it's like basically um, really harmful to you and can cause, you know, severe diarrhea and um, abdominal pain and, and different things like that, but it could lead to like dysentery. Or something that can be, you know, even more harmful to you. So it could be deadly. And, you know, you're thinking, and I <laughs> actually did this once. This is how I, it came to mind. When I was in Slovenia, we were um, whitewater rafting. And <laughs> and they're like, the water is so clean. You can drink it. And so I, like, scoop up, you know, without even thinking about it, like, scoop up some water in my hands and, like, drink it. And I'm like, ooh, it's tasty. And then I got um I got real sick after and I thought that might be why I was sick, but it was probably something else. I had to get all these tests done. <laughs> so you you think like it's kind of you think like, oh, fresh water, this water's so clean and, and beautiful and clear and crisp, you know? And it could really actually lead to some really harmful stuff in yeah, your body. <laughs> well, things still poop in that water, so Right, I know like why I thought like, oh, let me drink some. <laughs> Like, you just wasn't thinking, you know? Yeah. Well, yeah, that that also, I think, fits really well, because that, that's also like a, <laughs> a sort of roulette situation, because yeah. you could drink it and be fine and have, like, a really, you know, <laughs> clean water. Right. Or you could drink it and get really sick. 
<laughs> exactly. Yeah. Oh, I thought that was kind of funny. Okay, so I don't know if this counts, but like, you know, like foods that are good for some people but could be deadly to others is like allergy, you know, things that have allergies, like peanut allergies. Is that something yeah. like... Yeah, I, I guess, guess it's only yeah, forbidden you, to some people. If you have yeah. an allergy, that becomes a forbidden taste. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah, because anything, <laughs> if you have a severe allergic reaction, it could, you know, you could die from it, so. Oh. Yeah, another thing I was thinking was, like, antifreeze. Oh. Which is very bad for you. It can absolutely kill you. <laughs> but is supposedly sweet. Like it's, <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know. It? No, I'm why, just no <laughs> I don't know why people know this, but I've read that it tastes sweet. Ew, that's gross. so. It's the kind of thing where it's like, <laughs> yeah, forbidden taste. You know. I would stay away from that. Isn't there like um, I know there's like a disease called like pica, where you eat like all kinds of weird, you know, stuff that isn't. And, and it's yeah. not even necessarily food items like that, but is there? Can I wonder cats if that goes along. That too? I think so. I wonder if that goes along with drinking, though. Like when you say like antifreeze. Hmm. Yeah, I don't like, know. Like, do you do you have a compulsion to like drink weird stuff? I don't know. Although speaking of uh, antifreeze, there's a, a bit of a story. So. Oh. A few years back, I mean, I guess more than a few years back. Uh, <laughs> There was an incident where some Austrian wineries used um, a component of antifreeze to sweeten their wine because the harvest what? was bad that year. Yeah. Oh, no. So the thinking was uh, they, they use this chemical in it, and in a large enough dose, the individual bottles won't be enough to get someone sick. That is scary. Did they get in trouble? Yes, they got caught for it, and it... There's a whole international scandal. Wow. You wonder why so many people, like, have cancer. <laughs> like... Well, I think that's a situation where you get sick immediately if you, like, not, like, a cancer-causing thing. Yeah. Yeah. Which I, I think wow. is outside of the scope. Like, you know, uh, asbestos is something that's <laughs> going <laughs> right. to kill you in a number of years, not, like, soon. So I don't think it counts. Oh, okay. Well, okay, so I have another one. So I remember reading about this, um, and I don't, I don't, again, I don't know uh, the details of it, but stuff like, I guess it's like stone fruit, like um, peaches or something like that, like you're not supposed to eat like the big seeds or um, like stuff like that because like you can eat the fruit part, of, you know, the, I guess the fruit meat <laughs> part of it. <laughs> <laughs> but not the um not the seeds because it could get you sick it, it's like something that produces like cyanide or something and if you ingest it you could get like very very sick so i always thought that was kind of funny because it's like how do you learn how do you know you know like back in the day like whoever first started like eating peaches or something like that you know like how do you know not to eat you know the actual the core of it you know Right, yeah, well, it's like with all sorts of fruits and mushrooms and stuff, like, who picks this up and is, like, <laughs> willing to take that yeah. dice roll? Who's the guinea pig, yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, kind of crazy. Also, okay, here's another one, elderberries. So, I remember a few years ago, like, my friend, um, who's a pharmacist, she made some, like, elderberry tincture because you know it's supposed to help you like when you have like colds or flu or something it's supposed to help you get better or faster if you take elderberry like either syrup or a tincture or something like that but there's I was a little, I remember being like a little nervous because I had also read before that like elderberry can really make you sick too but how do you know like because a lot of people just make this homemade you know like how do you know if you're making it, if you're making it right, or if you're making it to where it'll make you sick? So I'm thinking, like, do I want to uh, drink this uh, homemade elderberry right, stuff? Yeah. <laughs> like, you get a little nervous. Right? Like, you want to get better faster, but then you're like, what if it makes you more sick? <laughs> so I don't know. I think that's, that's like you're saying, it's a dice roll. Like, 
how do you know you're making it right? That stuff makes me nervous when people make their own stuff and it's something that could potentially be harmful, you know? Yeah, well, um, speaking of, Fly, uh, Amada? Amanita? I don't know how to pronounce it. The mushroom that, you know, the very stereotypical mushroom, the red one with the white dots. Oh, okay, yes. I don't yeah. know what it's called, but yeah. Yeah, that that one's uh, poisonous. It can make you very sick. And it looks so pretty. <laughs> right, yeah, yeah. But uh, you can apparently, if you prepare it right, you can eat it safely. You can neutralize the uh, toxins and then eat it. But that's well, another thing that's... where, like, again, <laughs> if someone's doing that, how do you know that they're doing it properly and you're not going to get sick? Well, that's like um, the puffer fish. Yeah, you know, that's yeah. like kind of considered a delicacy, but like if it's made incorrectly, it'll kill you. You know, it's like, why would you take that chance? You know? I mean, it can't be that good. <laughs> uh, but, like, yeah, I imagine before people, like, figured that out, they must have, like, eaten it and been like, wow, this tastes really good, and then it killed them. Like, yeah. <laughs> or something like that. Like, yeah, that's, it's that's like definitely so a forbidden taste that people learned how to make less. <laughs> so. Yes. It's, like, so odd. Yeah, that's that's a real weird one. So... Here's okay. Here's one I remember. I may have told this story before, but when um, my husband and I were in St. Lucia several years ago, <laughs> we went like we had this. I don't know if it was like a a tour person or just like our taxi driver, like telling us stuff, you know, about the island and different stuff. And one of the things that the guy said was um, he pointed out like this cashew fruit. I don't know, it's fruit, I guess, but um on a tree and so i've never seen like a cashew like growing in the wild but it's basically it has this little thing that looks like a tiny bell pepper and then like the cashew grows like underneath that but the the guide said you know you can't just take the cashew off and eat it like it has this acid on it and that's why you have to like cook them like boil them or roast them or whatever you're going to do with them before you eat them, you can't just eat the cashew. Well, Travis wasn't paying any attention to that. And he picks a little cashew fruit off of the tree and breaks the cashew off and eats it. And it like, <laughs> like burned his lips and his mouth because it had acid all over it. And you're like, dude, he just said that. I can't believe he didn't hear that part. But it can, um, depending on how much you consume, it could lead to death. So I was, that's always a funny one where like, it's something that's very common that you, you know, you may eat all the time, but you don't know that it is prepared for a reason before you eat it, you know? So yeah. that's another example of that. Yeah. But yeah, I think, I think like this topic in general, just like humans are weird and we look at a thing <laughs> yeah. and we're like, this thing, like, you know, we'll, we'll eat it first, I guess. Yeah. And then we're like, oh no, that's bad. And then we look at it and we're like, but what if we could make this in a way that's not bad, <laughs> you know? To, yeah, like, well, I know, it's, like, so weird. To make safe the forbidden tastes. Yeah, our, um, like, speaking of, you know, how we were just talking about Cajun dishes, like red beans and rice, like, we always knew, like, you soak your beans, the dry beans, you know, before you make the red beans and all that kind of stuff. Well, I just always thought, like, you're you're doing it to soften them, but... It's actually because of the lectins. So, like, that could be really harmful to your stomach. And so you're supposed to soak them before you eat them to remove, like, some of the lectins in it. So I thought that was kind of, um, that's an interesting one. That I never knew why you soak your beans. I just, you know, I just thought that's just what you did. <laughs> so there's an actual reason for it. Yeah. Yeah. So this is kind of the same thing, but, like, you know, I've heard before, like, there's certain things, like, when you're pregnant that you shouldn't eat, like, raw honey, well, I don't know if that's a <laughs> redundant, but honey, and, like, um, unpasteurized, like, cheese or dairy products, and I'm always like, like, why? Why can't you eat that? But apparently, that can cause harm to, like, you know, you, you know, your growing baby inside of you, but 
but I don't know why. So that's something that, um, you know, I know like honey can be, if it's not like pasteurized, you know, and we get a lot of like local honey, I'm sure every, you know, around the world does get a lot of local honey, but nobody's sitting there pasteurizing it, you know? So I'm always like, why can't pregnant women, you know, eat honey? But apparently it can, it can get you pretty sick, like whatever toxins in it. So those kinds of things, like unpasteurized cheese, like, I mean, when, when I'm traveling, I mean, all kinds of pasteurized cheese, you know, (laughs) that's probably why I've gotten sick before. (laughs) No, but, um, that always I'm curious about, because it's like, well, why is it mad? You know, I don't know. People eat it and they're fine. But what if you get a bad batch or something? I don't know. Do you know anything yeah. about that? No, I, I I, guess just, you know, fetuses can be very sensitive. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, fetuses are sensitive. There you go. <laughs> yeah, I'm just always curious, like, why some places... You know, you can you could eat it and not have a problem, and then like you come to the U.S. and you're like, no, everything has to be pasteurized. You know, I don't know. I guess because like E. coli and yeah, listeria and those kinds of things. You know, but why don't they have a problem with this in Europe? You know, I don't know, or maybe they do, and I just don't know about it's, it. Yeah, it's probably the sort of thing where like uh, it it can be safe. It's just safer if you do pasteurize. Yeah, well, it definitely tastes better unpasteurized. So right, and I guess you're making a trade off between that and taste. Yeah, which is why they're a forbidden taste, right? <laughs> you might have a good taste, well, but they might not be good for I, you. I don't think I don't think unpasteurized foods really count in that. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, maybe not because they're I'm actual pretty sure foods. <laughs> pasteurization's a pretty recent uh, invention <laughs> yeah, in human true. history. Like, compa- like you know, the whole span of it. So the moral of the story is: don't eat lava. <laughs> don't lick a raw cashew. <laughs> if you're gonna get mushrooms, eating. be careful. Don't just drink stuff like uh, antifreeze or <laughs> river water. Yeah. Be real careful. <laughs> yeah, that, there you go. All right, well, you got anything else to add to this? Hmm, I don't know. Like, uh, <laughs> <laughs> do, do do the forbidden tastes call to you? Like, you know, Call of the Void? Have you ever heard of that? Yeah, well, we talked about it when, did we, we? when we did the, uh, yeah, the, um, the, oh, yeah. why can't I yeah, ever remember did. this? The, the Amagara. Uh, Enigma of Amagara <laughs> Fall, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I totally I forgot there, about right? that. Wow. Yeah, we talked about that. Um, no, I am a very, like I said, I have a refined palate. Okay. Oh, okay. So I'm a very picky eater. In fact, like recently we went on a trip and um, this group of people that I was with at the at a bar, they were doing um, drinks with a scorpion in it. And like you eat the scorpion... Like, it's just, you know, it's kind of like tequila with a worm in it. This is a scorpion drink. And I thought it was just so, first of all, why did you have to kill scorpions just to put them in a drink? Secondly, what is the, um, you know, how are you preserving these scorpions? If they're like pickled scorpions or something? I don't know. I don't get it. And then thirdly, why the hell would you want to eat that? Okay. But a couple of people that I was with, they did it, drank the drink. And ate the scorpion, and I was so grossed out. Like, why would you want to do that? I mean, it's a little one, but still, like, you got a scorpion going through your digestive system, bro. Like, <laughs> I don't know. I don't like it. I don't think that's I probably think a terrible. big deal, though. Although, I, I think most people Ew. would probably not want to eat a scorpion. No, I don't have any kind of call to eat forbidden no? okay. stuff. Besides my love of unpasteurized cheese and dairy products uh, and raw, you know, honey that hasn't been pasteurized, I ain't doing it. <laughs> yeah, so you, <laughs> what you about never you? just look at a mushroom and think, that looks appetizing, no. but it could probably kill fact, me. I don't even like mushrooms. No, I, you know, I'll eat like a mushroom risotto, but I like to pick the pieces of mushroom. I, I don't like the texture of them. Not going to do it. And I have no desire to eat like puffer fish or like, you know, all these like kind of daring food choices it ain't me (laughs) okay i mean i don't either because i don't like food 
but <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that would be pretty you interesting know, a, if you did a that. A lot of like poisonous <laughs> berries, though, look very appetizing. You know, they, they look like normal yeah. berries. I always think like, what would you do if you were like, you know, lost in the wild and you had to survive? And I guess my answer is, you see what the animals are eating. Well, you know, you just eat that. But some animals can eat stuff that we can't. So yeah. how do you know? Like, yeah, you don't want to eat stuff because, especially if it's a slower acting poison, like, that is not a fun experience. Yeah. No, right? Yeah. I always remember, like, the leaves of three, let them be, leaves of four, eat some more. <laughs> I mean, so I guess that's okay if it has four leaves. <laughs> I don't know. I'm sure that's not accurate, but... Uh, who knows? <laughs> I, I am not yeah. planning on surviving in the wilderness anytime soon, so. <laughs> Let's hope, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, all right. I guess we will uh, conclude. Yep. Yeah. All right. Well, this has been our Beachview podcast today. We hope you enjoyed it and join us next time. Bye. Bye. Don't eat the forbidden <laughs> tastes. <laughs>